Hello, everyone. And so all the pa time has passed, and now it's my turn. Let us read the words. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 4, starting from verse 32. Acts chapter 4, starting from verse 32. If you found it, I'll read, starting from verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, and neither said any of them that all of the things which he had possessed was his own, but they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things which were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribu distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. And Joseph, who had by the prophets, was surnamed Barnabas, which is interpreted the son of the consolation, a Levite in the country of the Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And a certain na man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold the possession and kept back a part of the price, and his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast lied unto, not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and fear, great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Ye for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came forth came in and found her dead and carried her forth and buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. After verse 11. Everyone, today in the Bible, so the couple, Ananias and Sapphira, as they sold a plot of their land and gave the price of their land to the Lord, they hid a part of the price of the land to themselves. And they came to the church. They said, I have sold this part of the land. I have kept this much part of the, unto us. And I gave in this part to the church. They were not honest. And they said, oh, we have sold all of our land. And so Ananias and Sapphira, they deceived the, the church. They hid a part of the price of the land and gave a portion of it to the church. So please have a seat. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Uh, please have a seat. Yes. And so, selling a portion of the land and giving a price of the land. Yes, you have a you have a choice to sell the land or not, and you have a choice after selling the land to give a pr portion of that price to the church or not. And so Ananias and Sapphira, what they did was, they said they wanted to give everything to the church, but they felt that it was a waste to give everything. That's why they kept a part of it. And they deceived the church, saying that they have given all of it to the church. You know, it's your choice not to sell the land or not, and to give it all to the church or not, not give it to the church at all or not. That is up to you. But they have lied to the church saying that they have sold the land and given, brought everything to the church. 
And so Peter asked them, is this everything that you have brought? They said, it is everything. And so they're lying, right? And so Peter said, how can you deceive the Holy Ghost and lie? And Ananias, he died on that spot. And not too, and not too long later, his wife, s a p h i r a came and Peter asked her, is this everything of the land? Yes, this is everything. How can you deceive the Holy Ghost and lie? And the people that have brought your, taken your husband, you should also be taken away. And s a p h i r a also died in that moment. Everyone, if this happened in Gangnam Church, who would come out to the Gangnam Church? So I thought about that. If this happened in the Gangnam Church, who would ever come out to the Gangnam Church? The church where you die if you lie, right? Maybe that's the kind of rumor that was spread. Everyone, the important thing is, we believe in Jesus. And so out of formality, we believe in Jesus a long time ago. But the most important thing is, By the blood of Jesus, we have been washed. And that is what we realized. Jesus has, in order to deliver us from sin, has saved me from sin and shed his blood for us and died for us. And when we think about this, it moves us so much. And amongst church members, they're so, they're overwhelmed with thankfulness. They sell all their possessions and, they, and then the apostles, they bring in the offering and they share the, whatever they needed for the church. And so Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their possession. And they said, This is every, if I give everything that I have sold, what if we go hungry? And so, if you, if you don't have faith, you don't have to sell your possession, understand? You don't need to sell your possession. And it's okay if you give only half of the price of the possession. You can bring just one-third of the possession. No one's going to say anything about it. But as they saw how people, they were selling all their possession, they also wanted to give everything that they had. But the important thing is, As we live our spiritual life, in the beginning, we go to church, and we go back and forth from church. And as we live our, as we live our spiritual life for a long time, we come to know that Jesus Christ has died for our sins. Oh, Jesus Christ has died for my sins. And even knowing this fact, they're knowing this fact but not believing in this truth. This, there's very few amount of people who believe in this truth. Oh, Jesus Christ has died for me, even though you say these words. Today, many, many churchgoers of Korea, uh, so many churchgoers of Korea, even though they say that Jesus Christ has died for them, for their sins, but they still say that they are sinners. If Jesus Christ... then what is the meaning of the death of Jesus for our sins? And you are just basically flipping upside down the works of Jesus Christ and making it meaningless. So according to the words of the Bible, Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their possession. Oh, they sold their land. Oh, so it would be to give it all away. I think we should keep some for ourselves so that we can survive off of it. Let's say they sold... Uh, sold uh, some land and they can, give, they can keep some to themselves and give it to the church. It's not a problem because it's yours. But the problem is that other people, they have sold their possession and they have given everything to the church. They have faith. I sold my land and I have given everything to the Lord. Will God make me starve? Right? Would God allow me to starve? No, God will never let me to starve. God will provide. God will raise, allow me to raise my children properly. And those with faith, it is not a problem to give everything to the church. But those who lack in faith, who don't have faith, what is the heart they have? Oh, I also need to so, sell all my land and give it to the church like other people. 
But after selling the land, and if I bring it everything to the church, then what if my my children go starving? What what should I do? What should I get them to eat? Oh, I shouldn't give everything. I should just give half of it, and so that we can cook and we can eat and we can feed our children. Shouldn't we do it like this? If you think that way, then you should do it that way. But the important thing is, the land that you have to sell your possession and to give it to the apostle, you say that you give it to the apostles, but these people, is, they are the ones who truly give all possessions and offer to the church because they believe that God will provide for them. And that is faith. And when I first was living for the gospel, not, not now these days, but a long time ago in the beginning, I used to starve a lot. But these days, I live so well. The church really provides for me. And I cannot say everything. And a long time ago, I used to run, run out of food, run out of rice, and often go hungry and go starving. And then the missionary students, they also need to eat together with me. And so as I spent those times and, you know, me eating when I have abundance of rice and food or when I am, when I often grow, go hungry, skip a meal or two because I have no food, the amazing thing is I didn't starve to death and I'm still alive today. Why is that? Because God provides. And so Ananias and Sapphira, this is what they have done. They sold the possession and everyone sold their possessions and gave all that they had to the apostles. And so, but for, and, and as they gave back to the church so that everyone will have what they need. But if I, if you had the faith, if you had the absolute faith that God would provide for you so that you can give all things to the church, then that's not a problem. But the important thing is, everyone who is here at the church, so I'm talking about the forgiveness of sin. And so, the, the pastor who gave a testimony before, as he came here, he realized the forgiveness of sin. So he gave the testimony. And so, it's true that the blood of Jesus has washed away our sins. <laughs> Jesus has, if He has washed away all of our sins, then we are no longer sinners. Today, many churchgoers, they go to church. Oh Lord, please forgive. Please forgive this sinner. Please forgive this sinner. They pray like this. I used to pray like this also a long time ago when I used to attend a Presbyterian church. And I also prayed like this a lot back then. But the important thing is, the Jesus that we believe in is not the Jesus who will take away from us, but will bless and provide for us. Here, the apostles, selling all that they had and giving it unto the apostles, all the church saints and there was great work that came about in the church and we all with one united heart and so they all all things that they had were common so how is this possible And when I offer, sell my land and offer it to the church, so now I have no land, I have sold everything, I have nothing. I don't, and so my friends and families and relatives, and so they will, they will go starving and not be able to eat. If that happens, who is going to sell their land and give it to the church? These people, they sold their lands and offered it to the church when they gave it to the apostles. 
They have faith. That's why they did this. Why? The land that I have, if I sell it and give it to the Lord, God will bless me. God will feed my children. God will not allow my my children and my family to starve. And because they have faith, that's why they gave their possessions to the church. Whether you sell your church, sell your ring, sell your house, it doesn't matter. If you have faith, you can do these things. And so, in the church, what the what problem arises? You say that you come to the church. But the faith is not all the same. And when you, when Jesus Christ has died for our sins and He was punished for our sins, then Jesus, the sins in which we had to die for, because Jesus has died in our place and was punished, is right that our sins are washed through Jesus. Right? Is that correct? That is correct. Then, truly, when I run, run, ran out of food, and if I truly gave everything to the Lord, then the Lord, what faith must you have towards the Lord? Lord, and so my kids crying and starving because they want to eat. If you were in that kind of situation, that you would not want to give. Oh, you know, why, honey, why are you making your kids starve and our children starve? Why did you give everything to the church? And you'll have, a, you'll have a fight with your wife or your husband. And then all you seem to have no faith and then you get divorced. And so that's the kind of problem that will arise. And so it's not that you need to give offering or sell your possession just because some other person does it. When you have faith, you should do it. When that faith comes to you, then even though you have no money, you ha you have the faith, and you see how God will clothe you, provide for you, feed you. As I lived inside of the Lord, I had many times when I went through financial problems. For many years, as I lived my life, yes, there were times of difficulties, times when I was poor. But God has never turned a blind eye towards me. God has always protected me, guided me. And I cannot deny this. And so, the first and firm, foremost, it, it is the forgiveness of sin. After receiving the forgiveness of sin, after receiving the true forgiveness of sin, we become one together with Jesus. We are no longer Jesus after receiving the forgiveness of sin. And so Jesus and I, we become one. Jesus and I, we become one. And so what I need, I'm able to pray to Jesus for what I need and Jesus can provide you what you need. And as I live my life, There are many times when I was in difficulty and lived where I often go and went without eating. Yes, there were times when I often went out went without eating. But God, He fed us, clothed us, and helped us, and I was able to clearly witness this. And everyone, you as well. As you live your spiritual life, and there are times when the church needs money. Oh, I should offer the money to the church. Oh, but this is all I have. If I give all of this to the church, will God provide for me? And the people who have the faith that God will provide for them, then it is not a problem that they can offer everything to the church. And if I say it again, so just because you all go to church doesn't mean all your faith is the same. Is that correct? Just because you come to church doesn't mean you all receive the forgiveness of sin. In Korea, many people who believe in Christianity, why do they believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus, people believe in Jesus and say that they have, Jesus has washed away their sins. Jesus, if He has truly died for our sins, then your sins are forgiven or not. Your sins are forgiven. Then faith, people whose faith didn't reach that far, 
Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. That's what they say. Is that correct? Lord, I'm a sinner. That's what they say. Then, it's true that I've committed sin. I'm a sinner. But Jesus Christ, through His death, that we have become redeemed and forgiven of our sins. If you truly believe this in your heart, are you still a sinner then? No, you're not. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And so everyone, God, through this Bible, we first came to church and had service, and we, we first lived our spiritual life, we were sinners. But one day as we listened to the words of this words or sermon or fellowship, ah, ah, the blood of Jesus Christ has washed away my sins. Oh, that's what the Bible says. Oh, then Jesus has died for my sins. If so, then my sins are washed. Is that correct? Then, I am not a sinner. Everyone, that's what the Bible says. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by His grace, we are justified. If we are justified, what does that mean? It means that we have no sin. Is that correct? God, if He says that he, we have no sin, then we have no sin. Then, but everyone, today, many people, they go to church, they meet Jesus, they bring their Bibles, they read their Bibles, they go to church, they give offering. But still, there are many people who still say that they are sinners. Why do people say that they are sinners? Why do they say that? Surely Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was crucified for our sins and shed His blood for us. That was when our sins were forgiven. That is the truth. And the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through Jesus dying for our sins, freely by His grace, we are justified. We are justified means that we have no sin. Do you understand? Pastor Oaks Park is not doing it. Sister, you are righteous. You are cleansed. You are cleansed, brother. Your, your sins have been washed through Jesus. The Bible says so. And so the words of the Bible, those who believe in the words of the Bible, I committed sin. But Jesus if He has washed away my sins, then my sins are washed. I am justified. I am holy. And that is what they say. And so, people, they go to church 10, 20 years. Oh, the, if they're, the people who have not realized that the blood of Jesus has washed away their sins, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. This is what they still say. Do you understand? And I ran out of food. I have only one sack of rice. And so, and I went to the missionary's house and gave one sack of rice to their house, and God provided me with another sack of rice. Everyone, when you experience such things through faith, it's so nice, right? And so, my kids don't need to starve, and I didn't want my kids to go starving. And I gave everything to other people, but God 
continued to provide for me. He never allowed me to starve and go hungry, and now I still live and sur- I'm alive. When you have that, people who have this kind of faith in their hearts, so they can give a portion of their rice and give it to the missionary's house or give it to a pastor's house. You know, so I can't say to give it to the pastor's house. It, se- it seems like I'm telling you to give it to me. Oh, I gave it to pastor. Oh, but God, he provided for me again. And so, to believe in God, what I know and the theories that I know, and God is very different. But faith, but when we receive through faith, what happens? And so things that I cannot imagine, God is alive. He can do all things. He will help me. And so you begin to have that faith in your heart. And so uh, you can give and uh, give to others if you believe that God will provide. And so you must understand this. Don't misunderstand the. Don't misunderstand thinking that I'm telling you to give rice to my house and that you will have no rice at your house. Oh, oh, you know, give. I should never give rice ever again. Oh, uh, you know, you should. Uh, and I will uh, if. And so if you, if you give me rice and you don't have any rice to eat, then I will be in a tough position. Oh, you know, if you have enough, then you should. You should give. Everyone, this is the this is the world of faith. And some people they receive the promise of God. And so I only have one sack of rice, but the church with a, is having a, a event, and I gave it all to the church, and I prayed, and God provided me for the next day another sack of rice. Everyone, when you experience this through your faith. And people who experience this, it is not a waste to give everything of theirs to the church, right? But those who are faithless, those who don't have any faith, they don't even talk to their wife or their husband, and so they gave their sacrifice to somebody else, and then they starve and starve. They starve for one or two days, and then the husband will shout at their wife, and then the father-in-law will find out, and then. It will cause a ruckus, and so I gave a sacrifice. Uh, you know, who said to give the sacrifice to somebody? Everyone. The good thing is that our church, nobody, nobody is like that in our church, right? And I'm a pastor, and to some church members, I give gifts to them. But these days, everyone is so wise, and they have faith. And so, let's say I offered money, I gave offering to the Lord. And truly, how am I going to feed my children? I was worried at first, but God fed my children, and I experienced this many times. And even right now, I'm sorry to say, but I don't have too much worry recently about food. Long time ago, I used to worry a lot about food, but God has helped me, and it was so amazing. And so we bought the land. And so we bought this land. And so this is the basement. This is the basement floor. This is the basement, and we have made the chap the main worship center here in the. Basement floor and it's so good. So we have ventilators and so we can circulate the air. And so because we're in the basement, and so if you go out, there is the Gyeongbuk Highway. A, you can't hear the car sounds at all. And there's a lot of dust that the car makes. But the, there's no dust that comes towards this way. At first, 
I, I thought this this land land was too expensive. I wanted to build a chapel here. And if you follow the Gyeongbuk Highway, one kilometer away, a few kilo, a few kilometers away, there is some nice land on on the valley, and so but it's a kind of a bad location. And we're about to build a chapel there. But God, by grace, has given us this land. And the owner of this land. And so there's a problem in the beginning. And so it was supposed to go to the creditors, but we were able to buy this land for a very cheap price. And so it was so good. And so I was not here. Pastor Moon Min Yong was here at the time. Pastor Moon Min Yong he told me, I was during, during that time I was living somewhere else. And so when I, so I was at a new house, and the brothers and sisters, oh they said, oh we want to we want to buy Pastor Oksu Park an apartment. And so when we we're having the the Bible conference in Jeju Island, oh honey when you come back from the Jeju conference we have a new apartment so come to that place and so after we came back from Jeju Island conference the sisters they provided some food in the new apartment and so they were it was such a happy time and so the church allowed me to use that apartment pastor Mu Min Yong what he said was uh, he sold the apartment oh really Okay, you you sold it, and what did you do with it? And he said, "Oh, we bought this land here." He did such a good job. I was so thankful to him. Anyway, Pastor Mu Min Yong, I didn't know, but he made plans, and I, it was the first time I realized. I didn't know in the beginning, but he bought this land, and he built, it, and so he sold the apartment. And so, he sold the apartment and bought this land, and I was so thankful. And so I heard that he sold the apartment. I asked him, and he said, "Oh, I bought this land." I was so thankful to the Lord. As people live their lives, things can happen in their lives, but everyone today. Many people who they they go to church. They go to church. They sing, not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade, can our sins that we have be redeemed. Holy Lord our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone. Jesus was crucified and shed his blood for our sins. He was crucified. If he was, then did, is if my sins are redeemed, am I a sinner or not? I am no longer a sinner. Everyone, Jesus, he saw how we were in sin and he saved us from sin. How can we be sinners? We cannot be sinners. Spiritual life, depending on your level of spiritual life, even though you go to church, oh, I'm a sinner. There are people who still say that I'm a sinner. And so to put it objectively, you're not a sinner. And so all people have committed sin, but through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Freely, by His grace, we are justified. Justified means that you have no sin. Do you understand? Oh, but Lord, we have committed sin. But it says, by God's grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through His death, that He has washed away all of our sins. That not, we cannot even say that we're righteous if we have a, even this little bit of sin. We must have no sin at all for us to be justified. That is why, f 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everyone, these words, what is this talking about? These are the words that is addressed unto us. Sister, you have no sin. Sister, your sins are washed. Sister, you have, brother, you have no sin. That is what it is telling us. Why? Why? Because we committed sin, but He has taken away all of our sins and He died on the cross. And all of our sins has been taken by Jesus. It was all resolved. Do you understand? For all have sinned. All have been, all sins have been redeemed. Sins of, even the littlest sins, the biggest sins. All have sinned. It is true. But through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through His death, He is, a per he is one who has no sin, but He died for our sins. Therefore, all of our sins has been organized. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And next, what does it say? Being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everyone, if it is dirty, you cannot call it clean, right? And just like how you cannot call a person justified if they have sinned. Justified means that you have been washed of all of your sins. And then everyone... Do you, have you not committed sin? No, that's not true. We have committed sin. Yes. There's not... No, so... Maybe there is maybe 30 people here who have not committed sin. Raise your hand if you have not committed sin. Nobody, right? Yeah, only all the bad people are here, right? Yes, that's all... That's who we are. We have all committed sin. But why are we justified? All of our sins, Jesus has paid the price of all of our sins on the cross. Do you understand? And so this, for example, I had a, let's say I had a debt of $300,000. This is for example. Oh, pastor, I heard you had, a, I, I heard you had some debt. Please, Take this and pay off your debt. If I say thank you and I take that, and then another elder gave me $100,000, then I only have $100,000 of debt, and another elder gave me $100,000, then I have no more debt if I pay it off. Right? Same thing. Everyone, if we say it precisely, no matter what kind of sin that you may have committed, God has laid all your sins on Jesus. And Jesus carried your sins. And when He died on the cross, all the sins that we have committed has ended on the cross. Amen. Everyone, then are you a sinner? Or are you not a sinner? Then what should you do? You must sing. Not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade, can our sins that we have be redeemed? Holy Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, be deen by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone, to believe in Jesus, I'm a person who has lots of sin, but Jesus Christ has died on the cross for my sins, and my sins were all washed away. And that is to truly believe in Jesus.
Amen. Everyone, all the people here, all the participants here, there's not a single person who has not committed sin. We have all committed sin. But, are we sinners? We are not. In the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Next, it says, Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through Jesus redeeming us, He has died on the cross for us, has paid the punishment of our sins for us, redeemed us freely by God's grace. We are justified. Justified means that we have no sin. Do you understand? Do you understand? God says to us that we have no sin. Everyone, are you sinners? No, you're not. Everyone, ever since I was young, I, I attended the Presbyterian Church. And the pastor, every day he asked for forgiveness. Oh, yesterday I lied. Today I stole persimmons. Oh, please forgive me. That's what I did also. But now I don't do that. Why? Because back then when I went to church, even though I said I believe in Jesus, I didn't realize the, the truth that Jesus Christ has washed away my sins. I'm redeemed by the blood of the, of the Lamb. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. We sing the hymns. Oh, by your blood I'm redeemed. And every time we sing hymns, we'll sing these hymns. Hallelujah. Now, now we can be redeemed. We are redeemed by the blood. But after we have time to, to sing and we pray, we say, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade, can our sins that we have be redeemed. Holy Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone, then, you, are you sinners or not? What? You are not sin. Those who say you're not sinners, why do you say you're not a sinner? What's the reason? Jesus Christ has washed away all of my sins, therefore I am washed of my sins. I'm no longer a sinner. And so those who do not know this truth precisely, they go to church, but still they say that they're sinners. And so when I used to attend the Presbyterian church, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to talk bad about the Presbyterian church, every day I was a sinner. And I did commit sin. Oh, I shouldn't do this. And my father, my father, what he, so what I felt so unfortunate was that he didn't receive the forgiveness of sin. And every time I talk about the forgiveness of sin, he would not listen to me. He would not accept it. My father really cherished his friends. My father's friends, they were all good people. Uh, but my father, and he really cherished his friends and he was close to them. And my father, and he uses his money for his, spend his money for his friends, and he was so close to his friends. And sometimes I'll think, Father, I have to, I need a notebook. Oh, you know, go ask my friend for a notebook. My father's friend, he was a stationery store owner next to the school. Hello, sir. Oh, yeah. What's what's the reason you come here today? Oh, I came here for a notebook. Which one would you like? Uh, this one is this one is five cents, ten cents. This one is twenty cents. Which one would you like? Okay, you want to take this one? No, take that. And then he will write it down. Oh, and then later on, my my father's friend will tell my father that I took this notebook. And so I would tell my father's friend that I would like to take this notebook. And then my father would tell my father that he my, I took this notebook, and he will, my father would pay him back. And so my father would pay everything for me. He would pay everything. And because Jesus has paid everything for us, 
everyone. It's just that you don't know that Jesus has made us righteous, not a sinner. And those who truly believe properly, they say that they are not sinners. Jesus Christ has died on the cross for all of our sins. We are no longer sinners. We are cleansed. We are washed of our sins. And so, not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade, can our sins that we have be redeemed. Holy Lord our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone, to believe in Jesus is not... We are people who have committed a lot of sins. We are... Jesus Christ has taken all of our sins... And to truly believe in this is to truly believe in Jesus. Everyone, the blood of Jesus Christ, if you believe that your sins are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, are you sinners or are you not sinners? You're not sinners. Those people, even if they don't want to go to heaven, they have to go to heaven. Why? You have no other place to go other than heaven. Do you understand? Everyone, ever since I was young, the church that I've been to was the Presbyterian church. And they will always tell me to repent, repent of my sins, and ask for the forgiveness of my sins. And I knew by theory that my sins were washed by Jesus, but I didn't know the truth precisely. I was always a sinner at the core of my heart. And so as I grew older, As I became 12, 11 years old, 12 years old, as I grew older, I began to read the Bible. I read the Bible many times. The Old and New Testaments, I read it many times. The Old and New Testament, there was a book called Leviticus that I was reading. And it was so amazing. It talked about how to wash away your sins. And how deep it was. In Leviticus, it talked about how when the lamb was taken for the sin offering and how your sins can be forgiven through the sin offering. And when I was reading Leviticus, I was so amazed. Wow. My sins are washed. In Leviticus chapter 4, it talks about the forgiveness of sin. And so how our sins are washed Chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, my sins were washed and it was the truth. I was so thankful. The little Lamb of God was crucified on the cross for us. And the Lamb dying for the, as a sin offering is the shadow of how Jesus would die for our sins. And that's what it's talking about in Leviticus chapter 4. In the Old, Old Testament, when the Lamb of the goat dies, it dies for our sins, and our sins are forgiven. And so it is talked about in Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any commandments of the Lord concerning things which not to be done, and shall do it against any of them, the priest that is anointed to do sin according to the sins of the people, then let him bring his sins which ye have sinned and a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for sin offering. And verse 4, And he shall bring a bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hands upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it up to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the, of the bullock upon the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And that is how our sins are washed. When the priest commits sin, when the ruler commits sin, when the common people commit sin, and so it is all the methods are different to wash away the sins. And so, according to these methods, Jesus Christ becomes a Lamb of God, and so the Lamb went through the death of the Lamb. And so it foreshadows Jesus dying, 
and he has died for us perfectly. In the Old Testament, through the sin offering of the blood of the goats, that's how you perform the sin offering. But that was just a shadow. But the true image was Jesus dying for our sins. And all of our sins were washed whiter than snow. That, to truly believe in this, is to believe in Jesus. Whiter than snow. Whiter than the snow. Through the blood that was shed, I'm washed whiter than snow. All the sins of the world. There's hymns like this, right? And so all of our sins has been washed. That's what it says. Long time ago, I used to attend the Presbyterian Church. I'm not sure about the Presbyterian Church now. I've never been there yet. For, the, every day they have, they confess for their sins. Every day they told you to forgive, to ask for the forgiveness of your sins. Every day, and I don't do this. I ended it then. That Jesus has died for all of my sins on the cross when He shed His blood, and I am for sure that that's when all my sins were washed. If Jesus has not washed away my sins, then that means that Jesus has died in vain. But Jesus did not die in vain. Jesus died for our sins. He has died for our sins, shed His blood for us, and He said, it is finished in the end. And that was when all of our sins were washed, has ended. And that is why, yes, we have committed sins, but we were not sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everyone, you are justified. You are justified. I read the Bible when I was young for a long time, for many times. And a long time ago, in the when I used to attend the Presbyterian Church, I used to say that I was a sinner. The elders, the pastors said that they were sinners. The elders said that they were sinners. The deacons said that they were sinners. The church members, they all said that they were sinners. I said that I had no sin. And then I became a cult, an outsider. And it's the same thing. People, they call me a cult, Pastor Oksapaka cult because I, I preach that I have no sin. You never committed sin before? You never committed sin? Tell us the truth. You never committed sin before? Yeah, I did commit sin. And then how could you be righteous? I became righteous. How? How? Because Jesus paid the punishment of my sins. I have no sin. You know, just because the Bible said that doesn't mean it's true. Then what is true then? And so I had a lot of those fights. And so, our church, there's a person named Shin Nam Sop very fluent in English. And so, but in Sonsan, nobody understood English. And so, in Daegu, there was a missionary school. There was a missionary school. And so, he translated for missionary de York. And so, Mr. Shim, who was, trans was a translator, he wrote a letter to the elder of our church. And during that time in Korea, there were around around 300 missionaries who came from the west, from the Western world. And so they, you can see that they were missionaries who came from abroad. And these missionaries, among these many missionaries, there were a few who were born again. And so. Many people, they went and they tried to work together with the Korean church. But these people, well, they could not cooperate because they were born again missionaries. And so what they did was, for two weeks, they fasted and prayed. And so 
But all the churches, they said that they were sinners, and so they, they matched with them. But they're born again. They cannot say that they're, they are sinners. And so as they fasted and prayed, and those five missionaries, they decided, let us run a missionary school. And let us nurture missionary students. And so, Brother Shin Nam Sub, he wrote a letter to one of our elders of our church. Oh, we have a missionary school. Oh, please send some students to our missionary school. And then so the elders call me, hey, Mr. Park, come over here, come over here. What are you doing these days? Oh, I'm just doing nothing. You want to go to missionary school? What's a missionary school? Oh, you can drink coffee there. You can eat you know, snacks there. That's the kind of place that it is. And so that's why I went to missionary school. Everyone, before going to missionary school, I already received salvation. And I read the Bible once, twice, thrice. I read the Bible many times already. And so Leviticus chapter 4, when I was seeing it, and it talks about how we receive the forgiveness of sin precisely. It is so amazing when I see it. And it says here, if the priest were to sin, you shall bring a young bullock without a sin, without blemish, unto the Lord for a sin offering. So what comes out next after this? In verse 13, if you look at verse 13, and if, if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, how they're able to receive forgiveness of their sins. And if you go down more, in verse 22, when the ruler committed sin, how they can receive the forgiveness of sin. And then this is the best part. It is verse 27. What is it? if any one of the common people sin through ignorance. And if any one of the common people sin, I'm like a common person. And so, you shall bring a lamb without blemish, a goat without blemish. And you shall kill the blood. And so you pour all the remains onto the altar and then you burn everything and then that is how you give the atonement and it shall be forgiven him. And so that was how the sin offering was given in the Old Testament. They will catch the lambs or the goats or the bullocks and that's how they perform the sin offering. But that was the shadow of the little Lamb of God, Jesus. And so... Jesus, when He came to this world, when He was crucified, our sins were clearly washed. Do you understand? And not just the sins that you have committed a long time ago, but even the sins that you commit in the, in the, when you're old, like 99 years old. And, uh, but by the name of Jesus Christ, all of our sins has been washed away. And if you read Leviticus, as if, you, if you read Leviticus, it's so fun. And also, if you look at Hebrews, and many pastors in Hebrew, many pastors in Korea, they don't look and preach in Hebrews because Hebrews is so hard. And so, if they if they look at the book of if you look at the book of Hebrews, it's so amazing. Hebrews chapter ten. Let's go. Let's open up. Where is Hebrews in the New Testament? Hebrews chapter ten. This is what it says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And so you should read this. It's that we are sanctified. It says that we are sanctified. Uh, it has become your shadow. Through Jesus dying for us. And the Bible says so. 
And before, I, when I didn't know, I said that I was a sinner. And because of sin, I was in pain, I was in sadness, I was crying. And every time I would play with my friends at night, I would steal persimmons, I would steal apples, and I would repent. And so now it talks about in Leviticus chapter 4, the atonement offering. In Leviticus chapter 4, it is so amazing. And so how is it recorded? And how we can wash away our sins? What's the true method to wash away our sins? And verse 20, and pay... In verse 22, when the ruler have committed sin, how we can wash away our sins. And next is verse 27, how when one of the common people sin, how they can wash away their sins. And that's me. I'm a common person. So or if his sin which he have sin come have sin comes to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering and kill the goats of female without blemish for his sin which he have sinned. But that he Goat is the shadow of Jesus. And so, we now, the era of Jesus came, and Jesus came as the Lamb of God to this world to die and be crucified on the cross, shed His blood, and He died for us. And that is why all the sins of the world were washed. That is why And so Jesus, through the Lamb of, as He was sent as the Lamb of God, He has washed away all of our sins. It is Jesus who was the true image of the shadow of what came out in the Old Testament of the sin offering. Through the death of Jesus Christ, all the sins of the world has ended. That's why all of you, your sin is no more. Whether you are evil or good or whatever you are, by the blood of Jesus, you have been washed. But not by silver or gold, nor by treasures that fade, can our sins that we have be redeemed. Holy Lord our God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Jesus saves me and keeps me just now. Hallelujah, and I join with the throng round the throne. In the song, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. When you believe this, then that's when the redemption will be fulfilled in your heart. If you still say you're a sinner, oh, then you're still a sinner. Jesus, you have redeemed my sins, but if you... But you need to accept it by faith in your heart. Then, after receiving the forgiveness of sin, now God is happy that I preach the gospel. And as I went to the missionary school, and so as I read the Bible, I can truly tell share and that my sins were washed and it's so good and so the, the missionary school is so good and there's one problem all of the people all of my my colleagues they preach the gospel people, people receive salvation to them but not me one time one person came one young guy came to our church and he's a very kind person and on saturday he came so it was a, the break in our church I told him to come and starting from morning to evening I preached the gospel to him and he didn't receive salvation and went back home and he went home and then the next day that brother came out to give a testimony and my heart was beating oh yesterday as he was going home I think he realized the gospel that I shared to him but that brother said I had 
no idea what Pastor Oks, Brother Oksu Park was saying when he preached the gospel to me. I couldn't just go home without understanding. So I asked another brother, and in 10 minutes I received salvation. And I was like, ah, oh, that hateful guy. And so, and so really, you know, if I had a gun, I'm not sure what I would do. I was saved, but no one, nobody would be saved when I preached the gospel in the beginning. But as time passed, as I, pray, as I prayed and shared the gospel, and as I preached the gospel, people began to be saved through me. I was so thankful. And now, even when I preach, I have preached many times. And through my preaching, people, I'm, I'm pretty sure that people have received lots of forgiveness of sin. I cannot count how many people, but numerous amount of people have received salvation through me. And I have lived a long life. And even now, as I go to many countries, and many people, they see that they are sinners. But the pastor, I went to South America recently, South and Africa, and I held events there, and they received the forgiveness of sin. I was so happy. And so until now, many churches in Korea, they are unable to receive the forgiveness of sin. But every day, and let us no longer say that we are sinners, but by the blood of Jesus, that has made me righteous by faith. May we accept it by faith. And the blood that was shed on the, on the cross of Jesus, believe that your sins were washed. And you also should share and explain to others that your sins are washed as well. When you come to believe this by faith, then you become the people of God. And afterwards, when I share the gospel, Many people continuously receive the forgiveness of sin. And as I finished the missionary school, and as I came out, and in Seoul, I began to do the work of the gospel. And many church members received salvation. I was so thankful. But, and when I when I discovered that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, then He has died on my behalf. And that is why all of our sins were washed. And I hope that you may believe this way. That is how all of us can become the children of God. I'll end here. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord, we were just people who have committed sin, who have done evil. But Lord, big or small sin, whatever sins that we have committed, it is that through the cross of Jesus that we were washed, and we truly give you thanks and glory. Even today, many people, they go to church, but they still say that they are sinners. Lord, to each and every person that is here, if they still think this way, then may they receive the forgiveness of sin in their hearts. And it is by the cross of Jesus that we are washed of our sins. Lord, you say that we are justified, we are washed. If we say that we are still sinners, even despite all those words, then we are denying the works of Jesus. Lord, allow us to accept the works of Jesus. Whatever our thoughts may be, let us throw away our thoughts. Accept the word of the Lord. And allow us to be born again through your grace. May you bless us. And by your precious grace, may the Holy Spirit reside in us. May we become precious workers like Jesus. And Lord, to each and every person here, may you give them the assurance of salvation. And may we ask. And may we share this gospel with other people. And so that the end of the earth, all people may receive this gospel that they may rejoice and live a happy life to the day that they stand before you. And we're so thankful you have blessed us in our Bible seminar. And may you fill all people here with the Spirit and allow us to believe in the Word rather than our thoughts. And may we share the Word of God. I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll finish the Sunday morning service.